Kurt Mosier, the Dallas PR man of the early 70s, loves to tell the story about the time Walt called him from a telephone booth to get a sports writer's number. Okay, Mosier said, now here's the number. You got a pencil? Nope, replied Walt, but I got my pocket knife. I'll just carve it in the wall here. Well, I've always carried a knife. See, my daddy told me one time, you show me if somebody carries a big, dull knife, and I'll show you the laziest <laughs> in the world. You know, if you ain't got time to sharpen a knife, or if you're too lazy to sharpen a knife, then you're too lazy. So I always, yeah, I always carry a knife, and it's usually sharp. <laughs> now, I carry my wallet my boot. I've got two wallets, incoming and outgoing. This one here has got, uh, you know, credit cards, my business stuff, and... Uh, then in the other one, that's the personal boot. It's always on the right. And, uh, you know, just the personal checkbook, address book and stuff, you know. But uh, I don't know. Thank God I, I don't wear anything but boots or I'd, I'd be out of luck with these big things carrying them around. This laugh isn't for everybody. But for me, nothing beats it. Walt Garrison is as country as chewing tobacco and armadillo boots. He was born a cowboy, played for the Dallas Cowboys. And like the song says, all his heroes were cowboys. And there was guys like Mahan and Jim Shoulders and Casey Tibbs. Those guys were my heroes growing up in high school and college because I wanted a rodeo. As I think there's a lot of guys around the rodeo circuit, you know, that would probably like to uh, find out if the stories about how tough I was are, are still true or not, you know? And, and uh, but uh, thank God they don't want to find out bad enough to jump on me. I mean, the guy was tough and you couldn't hurt him. He was, he was the type of guy that didn't lift many weights, but it was in great shape. It was because of the way he was raised. He was raised as a cowboy and those guys are real tough. He was just tough, dirt tough. It seems if you didn't make a real good tackle and hold on to him, he, he was kind of like one of those bulls you see in the rodeo that, you kind of hit the fence and bounce off and go somewhere else. In pro football, his prairies were 100 yards long and 55 yards wide. And he roamed this range treating tacklers like tumbleweeds. Yet his style, direct as frontier justice, did not impress everyone. He wasn't really very fast, he wasn't very big, and he wasn't very anything really I thought but the thing we discovered about Walt Garrison was he had a heart about as big as he was and that's saying a lot about a, an athlete even though he may have been less talented than others in the physical aspects of the game you cannot beat the competitiveness you can't beat the desire to be the best he gained almost 4,000 yards and scored 30 touchdowns in nine seasons but statistics were not the measure of this man. Walt Garrison was 10 gallons of toughness in a cowboy helmet. Garrison was a burr under the saddle, and defenders got saddle sore trying to tame him. hog-tied, bulldogged, and pistol-whipped. But no team or no player was going to run him out of town. Not even a showdown specialist like Dick Butkus. Butkus always had an intimidating style, and and uh, Butkus told Walt, he said, uh, if you ever, you know, if you come to the line again, you know, I'm going to bite your head off. And Walt looked at him and said, oh, if you do, that'll be the first damn time you had any brains in your head. <laughs> But I think it's the element of danger in any sport that really gets your adrenaline flowing, gets your heart pumping, and makes it worth doing. Hey, whoa! Wow, man, what happened? Oh, my tongue. Your tongue? I guess you realize now this is a pretty rough game. Are you that? You just keep the tongue in your mouth. All right. Ooh, man. The pain hurts me. You know, I don't like pain. But uh, uh, they they say that uh, they define it, you know, a threshold of pain. Some people's is low, some is high, you know, and uh, evidently mine is high. And he would never come out of a football game. He was tough, he was durable, and the, and the 49er game, which he played, he had a, a fractured a clavicle. His knee was 
bad, the, the doctor had to pull him off the field to get him off the field. Walt never gave up. There's no way a guy should have played. His ankle was swollen and he could hardly walk. He went out there and played, and that's the type of player he was. He was a guy that just never gave up. Garrison played with a broken collarbone, and uh, it was it was fractured all the way through. He played the whole game, and uh, I don't know if any of you all have ever had a broken collarbone, but it's very painful, especially when you're getting hit on it. When you think back about Walt Garrison, you think, you know, they really did chisel him out of iron or out of uh, mesquite wood or something because he's, he was tough as a nail. Don Meredith nickname Walt Little Puddin' because he said he's just so cute he looked like a little puddin'. Little Puddin' favored simple pleasures. His hands were rarely idle, usually busied by his two favorite pastimes, whittling and dipping snuff. Habits that this cowboy took to extremes. Walt had spasms in his back, and uh, and he was in the whirlpool, he, and he brought a snorkel. He couldn't get enough of his back in there, and so he had a snorkel he brought for about a month up to the training room, and, and we'd go in there, and, and we'd look over in the whirlpool, and there was a snorkel, and he, he'd come up and give us that Walt Garrison smile, you know, which had that snuff. He was dipping snuff underwater with a snorkel in his mouth, and, and I said, man, anybody that do that has got to be dedicated. I, I teamed up with a guy named David Dickerson, Brainy Day, we called him. He busted beer bottles on his head. I used to put lighter fluid in my mouth. We could go into a bar, and I'd have a mouthful of lighter fluid and strike a match and whew, look like a dragon. You know, he'd shoot this stuff out about this far, and then Dickerson would bust, you know, a couple of beer bottles on his head. And uh, that was a neat trick. You know, we was real, you know, they used to call us to do parties and stuff, you know, because we were big time. He's brimming up with uh, anecdotes and limericks and jokes and stories and songs and at the drop of a hat, he'd be reciting poetry, and uh, he was hilarious. I took Charlie Waters over one night to Russell's, and, and uh, he was asking Bear Creek, you know, well, can you lay on the floor and spit on the ceiling? And the ceiling's like 11 foot over at Russell's in spear joint. And uh, he said, yeah. And so, you know, he laid, he laid down on the floor and uh, spit on the ceiling, you know, and I mean, everybody was clapping. It's like his, you know, it was a great deal. It's like somebody clearing 19, 20 foot in a pole vault, you know. I mean, here's, here's a guy who spit 12 foot, 11 foot on the ceiling, on his back. Walt Garrison was a hard case football player who had a hearty sense of humor. He put in an honest day's work for an honest day's pay. He was a man who grabbed life by the horns. This America's Cup update is brought to you by Hilton, America's business address. Australia 4 is Alan Bond's best hope at keeping the America's Cup. But after the first round of defender trials, Australia 4 is in a different...